Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome all of you worshiping here this morning to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this, the fourth Sunday in Advent. A uh, few announcements before we begin our worship. First of all, there are worship opportunities this week since it is the week of Christmas. Uh, we do have worship on Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday of Advent at 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and then also at 7 o'clock, one of those, one or the other. We also have worship on Christmas Eve at 4 o'clock or 6 o'clock. And then the next weekend would be the following Saturday at 5 or Sunday at 10. So that we do not have a Christmas Day service for the, the sake of the scheduling and also the cleaning routine that we do here at the, the congregation. Yeah, just to let you know, we actually do clean the sanctuary after every worship service. I don't know if you realize that or not, but every time that we have worship here, it is, it is actually uh, uh, disinfected. So just to let you know that. Um, so that gives us more time to do that within services. Time, let us begin with the invocation. We remind ourselves that we are baptized children of God. We are baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, and we are his children. Therefore, as his children, as we gather together for worship, we remember our baptism with the words of the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. That our eyes and our ears may be open to receive the mystery of God's love. Let us first empty ourselves of everything that has closed our hearts to God, confessing our sin and need of forgiveness and life. At the Lord's own invitation and command, I confess all my sins to God, the very thoughts, words, and deeds with which I have offended him and hurt my neighbor. I come now in the sincere hope and faith of the forgiveness of God made known to the whole world in the mystery of his Son, Jesus Christ, who has sacrificed his own flesh and blood for me. Remove my sin and guilt for his sake and restore a right spirit within me. Amen. Upon this, your confession. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise.
Stir up our hearts, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Strengthen your gift of faith in us, and keep us by your power to be your own. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and may disturb no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The epistle is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us rise for reading the Holy Gospel. St. Luke, the first chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. In the one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I'm holding in my hand a basketball. basketball. It takes me back to the days when I was a kid growing up. I had two other brothers, and I was always told, don't dribble the ball in the house, right? Don't throw the ball in the house. Don't play ball in the house. Okay, you guys, how many of you did not obey your parents like I didn't, right? I did not obey my parents. I still dribble the ball in the house, right? And it is basketball season, is it not? I don't know if you like basketball, but what is the goal of basketball? To win the game, but how do you win the game? You put the ball inside the hoop, right? Right? I'm not a good basketball player, so anyway. So if we talk about goals this morning, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about goals, okay? So playing basketball, you have a goal. What about Christmas? Is there a goal in Christmas? What is the goal of Christmas? Have you ever thought about this? Goals on Christmas? Maybe some of you thinking the goal of Christmas is to get everything down on my checklist, right? Shopping, check. Dinner, check. Invite family, check. Clean house, check, right? Is that the goal of Christmas? Sometimes we live that way, right? We think that way, that we're prepared if we have a goal list and we get all those goals checked off, right? Is that the goal for Christmas? No, it is not, okay? So to spend time with family, is that the goal for our Christmas? No, it's not the goal for Christmas. It's part of Christmas, but it's not the goal for Christmas, right? What about to get out of school for a while for all those kids, right? Or teachers. That's the goal for Christmas? You may think that's the goal for Christmas, but that's not the ultimate goal, right? 
That is not your ultimate goal, to get out of school. What about to learn patience? Maybe that's our goal for Christmas. Yeah, there's something to that, but that is not the ultimate goal either. Or how about to eat anything and everything you want, right? That's the goal for Christmas. To just, just be a glutton, right? That is not, definitely not the goal for Christmas, right? Nor is Weight Watchers after Christmas. That's not the goal either, right? Uh, what about to give presents? Is that the goal for Christmas? Is that what we're about at Christmas time? No, it's not. You all know that. We give presents, but it's a good thing, but yet it is not what we're all about, right? So what is the goal for Christmas? These things that I list are all good things, are they not? All good goals. But what is the goal? You know, one thing you hear, you hear in the world a lot is the goal of Christmas is to be as perfect as you can, right? Right? No, you better be, you better be good, for goodness sake, right? So maybe that's our goal for Christmas, to be perfect. So how are you doing your goal? Are you, are you perfect? Are you perfect yet? You and I all know that is an impossibility, right? It's like me playing on an NBA team. It's, in, it's an impossible, that is never going to happen. Never, ever, ever. I can barely dribble the ball in my old age, right? That's not going to happen. But you know what? Perfection actually is a goal for Christmas, but you and I can't accomplish it. It's the goal that God has done for us. You see, when we come together, we worship Jesus, and we celebrate his birthday, the day that he was born, the day when God became human flesh and lived a perfect life for you and for me, who actually created and completed the goal which we could not complete in his death and his resurrection. And God forgives us of all of our sins in his death and resurrection in his perfect life. And he redeems us and makes us his own people in our baptism. Yes, believe it or not, the goal for Christmas is perfection, but you and I don't do it. And that's why we're here to worship the one who did it for us. Jesus Christ, the one born in Bethlehem, the one who was crucified on Calvary, the one who rose again from the empty tomb, the one who still lives and who lives and continues to reign for you and for me. Goals. Yeah, we have goals here and there, but what really is more important for us at this time of year and every day of our life is the fact that Jesus Christ is our Lord, is the Son of God, who claims us as his very own. Now let's all join together in a word of prayer. Repeat after me, please. Dear God, we thank you that you have given your Son, Jesus, to grant us forgiveness and eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. And we continue with the hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from Luke chapter 1. We listen again to verses 34 and 35. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I have not known a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power from the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the one to be born from you will be called Holy, the Son of God. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, a man was driving through the countryside when he got distracted by his phone. Fortunately, he was not driving that fast, but he landed his car into the ditch. Not taking out the farmer's fence, but he landed it in the ditch. He put the car into, into reverse, nothing. He put the car into drive, nothing. All it was happening was the, winds were, the wheels were spinning. He was stuck. So he looked around and he saw right close to him was a farmhouse. He got out of his car and started walking down the road and down the driveway to the farmhouse. The farmer who lived there was actually walking from his barn to the house, had spotted the man and his car. The man walked up to him, and the, man, the farmer met him halfway down the driveway, and the farmer says, I see you got stuck in the ditch. Yes, sir, I did. Well, I tell you what, the farmer says, my good tractor's on the back 40, my other tractor has hydraulic problems, is actually in the shop right now, and my pickup is getting the oil changed. But I do have a horse, Buddy. Buddy will definitely be able to pull you out of that ditch. So the, whor the, the farmer got Buddy the horse and got the horse out there and tied up the car to the horse. And the farmer said, pull, Nelly, pull. And Buddy didn't move an inch. Pull, Buster, pull, the farmer yelled. But Buddy still did not move, not a muscle. Pull, Coco, pull! Still, Buddy the horse sat still, not moving one bit. Then the farmer said, Pull, Buddy, pull! And Buddy then moved and pulled the car out of the ditch completely and easily. And the man who was in the ditch just scratched his head and was wondering, What in the world? And so he had to find out what was going on here. So he asked the farmer, he said, Sir, can you tell me, why exactly were you calling your horse by other names than his actual name? And the farmer said, Well, you see, Buddy is blind. And if Buddy knew that he was the only one pulling that car out of the ditch, he wouldn't be moving. <laughs> Are you Buddy sometimes? I know I am sometimes. As a matter of fact, I'll share a story with you that actually happened to me this week. It was Wednesday morning. I was in my office, and I looked at the clock, and it was about 20 till. I thought, it's about time for worship. So I came out, and there was nobody around. I turned on all the lights. I, I turned on all the Christmas lights, the Christmas tree. I lit the Advent wreath. Still nobody showed up. It was 10 minutes till. It's like, usually somebody's here by now. So I went to the back. I unlocked the door even, and I looked out. There was nobody parked there. It was five till, and there was nobody there. And I started getting angry. It's like, I can't believe this. We are offering a worship service in the morning for people to come to worship, and no one's here. I'm here all by myself. Does no one believe in Jesus except for me? It was time for worship. And I still looked out the door, and there was still nobody parked there. There was still nobody here. I walked out, and I turned around outside in the narthex, and I looked at the clock, and it dawned on me. Today is Wednesday, not Sunday. It's 10 o'clock, not 11 o'clock. It's still an hour until worship begins. I felt alone. I know you probably have felt alone too in your walk, in your faith. 
I know that's kind of ridiculous, but it actually did happen to me. I did think that I was alone. It reminded me of the times of Elijah the prophet in the Old Testament. Elijah was one who preached against the, Baal, the prophet of Baal. And at one time he thought and he even prayed to God, saying, Am I the only one left in the entire land of Israel that believes in you, Lord? And God reassured him that he was not the only one there. I guess I might have had an Elijah moment this week. Being reminded that I am not the only one in this. I'm not the only one that believes in Jesus Christ. And this morning, you know that you're not alone either. This time of year can be a, a time for family, can it not? It can be a time for gatherings, time for social events. And in the midst of all that, it's one of the loneliest times of the year for people. We many times get so enraged and so enriched in all the whole hoopla of Christmas and family and get-togethers that we remember all those loved ones who have gone before us and we think to ourselves, am I the only one here? Am I alone? We wonder when the angel comes to Mary and tells Mary that you will conceive and bear a son and call his name Jesus. You wonder what was going through Mary's mind. Am I all alone? Am I the only one in this? But notice what happens. The angel, immediately after telling Mary of what's going to take place, reminds Mary about what's happening in her family. Elizabeth, your relative, is pregnant. She is six months pregnant. The one who was called barren, the one who could not have children, she has conceived and will bear a son also. Mary also was reminded that she was not alone when it comes to her faith. So what about you? Are you having feelings of loneliness? That you are walking the path of righteousness alone? Remind her that God is with you. And he has given you his family. He has given you fellow brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ who have been baptized into his death and resurrection to walk that life with you. Yes, we sometimes may feel that way, but many times feeling is not reality. Because the reality of our life is the fact that we are not alone. Remember the words that Jesus, that, that the angel said to Mary concerning Jesus. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the one to be born of you will be called Holy, the Son of God. You will call his name Jesus. That same Holy Spirit, the same Most High power of God comes upon us in his word, will come upon us as we receive his body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Yes, although we may feel lonely in our walk of faith, we are not alone. Regardless of who may be with us, the Holy Spirit, God who is most powerful and almighty, the most high, always is with us, always is walking with us, is constantly and will never leave us. As we celebrate our Lord's birth, and as we go each and every day of our life, whether we have good things or bad things happen to us, May we always be in remembrance that our God loves us and never forsakens us. Because he, his son Jesus, was forsaken for us. He who went to the cross, who yells out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken. He was left alone. He died there for you and for me. And in his death and resurrection, God grants us everlasting life. Yet yeah, every now and then, you may feel like you're a buddy. Like you are a blind horse. Not truly seeing what really is around you. That God is with you and that the people of God are with you as well. But reminder, as well, that we are not forgotten. We are not forsaken. 
that God truly does remain with us, his people, and grants us his grace and mercy through his son, Jesus Christ, that we have been granted forgiveness and everlasting life. And it is in that life we live together with our brothers and sisters in Christ under the most high God and his powerful spirit. And may God grant you that this Christmas and every day of your life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have made known to all nations your own glory, that in your Son is fulfilled the hope of all mankind of forgiveness and life eternal with you. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You once proclaimed your saving promise through the prophets and by the apostles and evangelists. You published the good news of your saving promise, fulfilled in the birth, life, and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that by your word our eyes, ears, and hearts be filled and strengthened with sure faith that being instructed in the doctrine of the blessed prophets, apostles, and evangelists, we faithfully eat the body and drink the blood of our Lord Jesus and declare his salvation to all the world. Hear us as we pray the prayer, pray the prayer your Son, Lord, Lord, has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, open up your container. We remember the words our Lord spoke. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. We give him thanks, he broke it, gave disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also to the cup. After supper, we give him thanks. He gave to them, saying, Drink with all of you. This cup is the testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the mission of all your sins. This do is off you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you.
Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sins. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, keep you steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting, and the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake, you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, as we draw closer to the grand celebration of the incarnation of the birth of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for making known the mystery of your love from the very first promise to Adam and Eve, through the continued witness of the holy prophets, apostles, and evangelists, and finally through your living voice, through the ministers of your church to this day. Grant that your living word ever call us and all sinners to repentance and faith in your only begotten Son. Lord, in your mercy, keep all you have called to preach, teach, and care for your people in true faith. Guard them against the attacks of the evil one, and give them health and joy in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, send your spirit over the whole world, that those who lead in the authority of government acknowledge your laws and your will, making for times of peace that we may live faithfully and in safety. Lord, in your mercy, by the mystery of our Lord's incarnation, his life of obedient faith, and his substitutionary death on the cross, establish us in the one true faith, and strengthen us in lives obedient to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. God's blessings to each and every one of you, and hope to see you soon, Wednesday at 11 or 7, uh, Christmas Eve, Thursday at 4 or 6, and then Saturday at 5 or Sunday at 11. God's blessings to you, and you have a wonderful, blessed day. You are dismissed to go at this time.